today and those of you in the house we, we give God thanks for you as well if you're in the house this morning I just want you to say I receive it I receive it I receive it, I receive it. just type I receive it in the chat right now I receive it I receive it I am blessed someone say I receive it I'm anointed. Someone say, I receive it. I am triumphant. Someone say, I receive it. Amen. We're getting ready to go into service. So wherever you are, just make yourself a sanctuary in your home, in your living room, in your kitchen. Amen. And we're going to worship those of you riding in your car. We pray and bless you this morning. Let's all worship. Amen. Everybody ready? Let's worship. It's time for worship. Anyone excited to worship? Anyone excited to worship? Anyone came with a praise this morning? Anyone logged in with a praise this morning? Come on, let us worship. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Let your glory rise, oh God. Let your glory rise, oh God. Let your glory rise among us, Jesus. Let the praises of our King rise as we cry out, as we shout hallelujah. Let your glory rise, oh God. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. We lift you up. Let your glory rise among us. And let your enemies be scattered. Hallelujah.
we call you faithful, as we call you holy, as we call you mighty, as we call you righteous, as we call you awesome. That's who you are to us, oh God. That's who you will forever be to us, oh God. So we extend our praise to you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you be. That's who he is this morning. Hallelujah. Call you home. 
Hallelujah. 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 H
Hallelujah. We are standing on holy ground, church. Hallelujah. 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 We are standing on holy ground. And there are angels all around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just engage the presence of God. Let's engage his presence this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. So come, let's bow down in the presence of a holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's reverence the presence of God this morning. Hallelujah. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we just bow our hearts. We bow our hearts in the presence of God this morning. Hallelujah. As we acknowledge his presence. We honor his presence this morning. We acknowledge the presence of God. We read this morning when everyone was in unison. And they honor and acknowledge the presence of God. There was a thick dark cloud that filled the temple. And the priest couldn't minister because it was a glorious presence of God. Hallelujah. Anyone expecting the glory of God to rise among us this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a glory cloud over us. And that cloud when we release, when we worship him, when we bow down and worship him, when we give God what is due to him, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We need to engage the presence of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We honor and acknowledge the presence of God in our midst this morning. And I acknowledge my bishop, our general overseer, and our senior pastor, uh, Bishop Eric McLeod. Hallelujah. My pastors, Pastor Lesma Watson, Pastor Richards, in his absence. All the ministers, saints of God, I greet you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. A special greeting to our online viewers this morning. Those who are on Facebook, those who are on YouTube, and on our website, ttcog.com. Welcome to the Triumphant Church of God. This is our Sunday morning worship service, and we are standing on holy ground this morning. So we give God thanks this morning. I'm just going to ask you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 3. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. You can follow along with me as I read. I'm going to be reading from the Life Application Translation um, Bible, so you can follow along with me. I'm going to be reading from, you, you find me reading in Jonah chapter 3, and it reads, Then the Lord spoke to jo Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. And on the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believe God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. And when the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on the heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent his decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and your flocks, 
may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must not turn, I'm sorry, they must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. And when God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray now, God, that your kingdom will come and that your will be done. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer, I pray that our hearts will be prepared to receive your word and your word will challenge us, God, in these challenging times. We will receive a word that will challenge us and give us the hope that we need to keep going forward. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah. I read from Jonah chapter 3, but I'm going to be referencing Jonah chapter 1 and 2 so to, to establish some context. I'm going to do a brief summary of jo um, Jonah chapter 1 and Jonah chapter 2. Jonah, the story of Jonah is a very popular story. If we grew up in church, or didn't even grow up in church, we always hear the story about Jonah and the whale. Um, so we are familiar with the story about Jonah. So in quick summary, I'd just like to summarize Jonah chapter 1 and Jonah chapter 2. In chapter 1, Jonah was commanded by God to go to Nineveh, where he was to cry against this great city for its sins. Instead of traveling to the northeast, Jonah went down to the seaport of Joppa, Joppa where he boarded a ship headed to Tarshish, and Jonah was headed in the opposite direction. Now, Jonah's disobedience resulted in God bringing about an intense storm, which was breaking, sorry, an intense storm, which was breaking up the ship, and which had frightened the sailors to the point that they were fervently calling on their God to save them. Now, at the same time, they were casting out cargo overboard and finding Jonah sleeping soundly below the deck. The captain of the ship commanded him to pray, which he apparently wasn't doing. But at the seaman's initiative, lots were cast to determine to whose account the ship was about to sink. And after persistent and thorough interrogation, Jonah told them he was at fault and what they must do to save themselves and their ship. They cast him overboard. And when Jonah was cast on the, sea, on the overside, the sea calmed and the seamen worshipped the God of Israel with sacrifices and vows. Jonah chapter 2 in summary. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly. And he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me, out of the belly of Shoal, I cried, and you heard my voice. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. And now we come to Jonah chapter 3, which is the focus of my message this morning. And the scripture said in Jonah chapter 3, verse 1, then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. And I would like to submit to, to your consideration this morning that this, as I'm about to share this message with you, I came up with this term, I don't know if there's such a term, but this is an introspective sermon. Under the topic, what did you learn in lockdown? What did you learn in lockdown? What did I learn in lockdown? Now, self-reflection or introspection is a personal tool that can be used to observe or analyze oneself in order to grow as a person. When we talk about self-reflection or introspection, introspection provides an opportunity to think about something in isolation of the thing itself. 
Self-reflection enables us to process and make meaning of all the great and not so great things, learning and working experiences we have had. Self-reflection is not about dwelling on negative things. Self-reflection enables us to learn from our experiences and to apply what we have learned to future experiences. You see, we won't grow from our experiences if we don't understand them and make changes based on what we have learned. We must be able to reflect both on our successes and our failures. We, everyone stands to gain from engaging in some type of self-reflection. And I would submit to you today that this might be a good time for all of us to take a sacred pause and reflect and introspect on the past seven months. You see, this has been, and, I, and without a shadow of doubt, this has been the most eventful seven months we, any of us have ever experienced in our lives. Uh, so for the purpose of this message, I would like to ask you for us just to use March 15, 2020 as a starting point, as a benchmark of introspection and self-reflection up until to this day, which is October 18th. And as we reflect, let us ask ourselves this question. When I was preparing the message, the Spirit of God said, don't preach, but teach. So this morning, I just want to teach. And I, and, I, and I ask you just to follow along with me. And I pray that we glean something for this message. So I want to ask you, as we reflect, let us ask ourselves these questions. What is your narrative? How would you describe the events of the past seven months? What are you feeling? What are you thinking? What is your evaluation of the events? What sense have you made of the event, the situation, the pandemic? What conclusion have you come to? And the final question is, what is your action plan? Do you have an action plan? What's next? As we consider church these points in this reflective cycle, we must be able to reflect both on our successes and our failures. We must be willing to learn from our experiences and to apply what we have learned to future experiences. You see, Jonah had a chance, Deacon Dias, to self-reflect from the fish belly. Yeah, when he was in the great fish, Jonah had a chance to self-reflect. And Jonah cried out to the Lord from the belly of the great fish. Chapter 2, verse 5 and 7 states, I sang beneath the waves, and the waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sang down to the very roots of the mountains. I was in prison in the earth, whose gates locked shut forever. But you, O oh Lord my God, snatch me from the jaws of death. As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord, and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. This was the prayer that Jonah prayed in the fish belly. This when Jonah was self-reflecting, when he was intro doing some introspection, this is what he was reflecting on, and it, it produced this prayer from the, from the fish belly. He said, seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I was sank, sinking to the very roots of the mountain. I was in prison in the earth, whose gate shut after me. After me. But you, O oh Lord, my God, snatch me from the jaws of death. I know some of us can attest this morning, during the height of the pandemic, we were snatched from the jaws of death. And I said, as my life was slipping away, I remember the Lord, and my earnest prayer went up to this holy hill, to this holy temple. Chapter 3, verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh 
and deliver the message I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took him three days to see it all. Jonah was given a second opportunity. He was offered a new beginning. This shows the amazing love of God, his way for his wayward people. And though Jonah did everything he could to resist the first call of God, after Jonah repented, God called him again. Though God was under no obligation to do it, he did it out of mercy and out of grace. Let us parallel, let us compare the story with Jonah and our experience with this COVID-19 pandemic. What led us to a global lockdown? Similarly to Jonah, at times it felt that we were figuratively in the belly of a great fish. Just in a dark and lonely place with a stench of death all around us. The church had no op other option but to go into a sacred pause. The church went into a sacred pause and we had to self-reflect while we were in lockdown. The church engaged in some marathon prayer sessions. We were praying like three and four times a week, three times a day. There are times we were praying six times a week, three times a day. Because it felt like we were in the fish belly, Evangelist Lindsay. We were in darkness and the stench of death was all around us. And we cried out to the Lord in distress. And we acknowledge our desperate condition and our needy state and our desire to return again to the Lord. And the Lord mercies delivered us and we are all here this morning. We are all accounted for. And today, church, we can say the Lord has given us a second chance. The Lord has given us a second opportunity. The Lord has offered us a new beginning. The last question in the reflective cycle was, what is your action plan? What's next? What did you learn in lockdown? What did I learn, learn in lockdown? What did you learn in the belly of the fish? What did you learn when you were in darkness and in despair? We all remember listening to the news. 1,000 de died today. 2,000 died today. In one day, no places to put dead bodies. You haul trucks. We are reflecting. We are introspecting. Because sometimes we forget where God has brought us from. The medical professionals, they were exhausted. The frontline workers were losing hope. And the affection rate kept on rising. It felt like we were sinking beneath the waves and the waters were closing in on us. And each time we got in the prayer line, we get in request, pray for this one, pray for that one. And thank God for Evangelist Ben, she was managing all the prayer requests. And at the end of each session, she will read these prayer requests. One name always stood out in my mind is Jonathan Richards. I remember we prayed for Jonathan Richards when he was an ventilator. We prayed day and night. We fought in the spirit for Jonathan Richards. And today Jonathan Richards is alive and well. He was in the belly of the fish. He was in darkness. But God people prayed. 
And today we can say, church, the Lord has given me a second chance. Has God given anybody a second opportunity this morning? The scripture said, this time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command. And he went to Nineveh, a city so large it took three days to see it all. Church, this is the time for us to cease the day. In the movie Dead Poet Society, Robin Williams underscored this point about ceasing today, the day when he used the Latin word carpe diem. Carpe diem means cease the day. We have to cease today. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We gotta seize the opportunity that we have been given. We won't grow from our experiences if we don't understand them and make changes based on what we have learned. God was determined to do the work through Jonah. So he did not give up on the reluctant prophet. And I believe with all my heart, God is determined to do the work through the body of Christ, triumphant church of God. That's why we are still here. God is determined to do his work through us, triumphant. And that's why the Lord has given us a second chance, Sister Kim. Capi diem, cease the day. Because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Are we going to obey the Lord's command this time? Are we going to cease the day? He said, then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to Nineveh, the great city, and deliver the message I have given you. What message God has given us that we have not delivered? God has given us some messages and we are holding on to the messages. We have not delivered the messages because we are so caught up with ourselves. But get up and deliver the message that God has given you. We need to cease the day. Carpe diem. Because tomorrow is promised to no one. One day, Jonah entered into the city and he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. Watch God. The people of Nineveh believed God's message and from the greatest to the least declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. Verse 10 said, when God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, God changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. God is determined to do his work through us triumphant. That is why we are still here. God's word is for everyone. We can't just look at someone and say they're not going to receive what I'm about to say. That's not for us to decide. All we need to do is deliver the message that God has given us. God is going to do the rest. Just deliver the message and leave the rest to God. Don't try to judge. Don't try to perceive. Don't try to analyze. Don't try to do anything else. But just open your mouth and deliver the message that God has given you, evangelist Angie. Open your mouth and deliver the message that God has given you. If we would simply proclaim what we know about God, we may be surprised at how many people will listen because salvation belongs to God. Jonah had to confess that salvation belonged to God. The people of Nineveh only needed to hear the message once. Someone is waiting to hear a word one time. That person's heart is already prepared to receive that word. I remember my cousin, the young man who got baptized here before we reopened. He said he was in the cafeteria in the military and a young man said to him, um, um, he said to him, do you know Jesus? 
And after that, the rest is history. That's all he said to him. Do you know Jesus? And at that, that's what he was waiting on because he was going through some stuff. And that one word, he gave his life to Christ. One message saved Nineveh. One message could save the entire Bronxville community. We don't need a litany of messages. We don't need a long narrative. All we need to tell them, God loves you. We don't need to go to theology school. We don't need BA, MA, or PhD. All we need to say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. And Jesus, God save a wretch like me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my desperate cry and he rescued me. That's all they need to know. When the woman at the well had the encounter with Jesus, she said, come see a man. If you don't have a scripture to tell them, tell them what God has done for you. Tell them how God has delivered you from lesbianism, homosexuality, adultery and fornication and thievery. Tell them your story. They're going to listen. Carpe Dama, church. We've got to cease today. Don't wait for tomorrow. What is our attitude towards those who are especially wicked? Do we want them destroyed like Jonah? Or do we wish that they can come to experience God's mercy and forgiveness? Let us cease today. We must intentionally set out to live in the present, keeping in mind that each day we are presented with a unique opportunity to make an eternal significance. Every day, we must look for an opportunity to make an eternal significance. Cease today. Carpe Deba. At this time, I just want to extend an invitation. And even as you're in your seats, if you want to stand, you can stand. But this is for us who know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And we know that we have given a second opportunity. If you don't have an action plan, I will encourage you to get an action plan today. Because tomorrow is promised to no one. Yesterday we heard a death of, about a sister. Today we heard a death of another sister. Cease the day. Cease the opportunity. Tomorrow is promised to no one. The people in Nineveh only needed to hear God's message one time, church. And we have that word that people need. We have that word and we're holding on to the word. I want to encourage us to deliver the message that God has given you. How will they hear without a preacher? People are living in spiritual darkness and we expect for them to believe, for, for them to behave in a way that is uh, that is pleasing. We expect for them to believe, behave in a way that is Christ-like. They're living in darkness. They're going to behave like people who are living in darkness. But we who know the light can introduce the light to them. The entrance of the word give it light. So I'm going to ask those of us who know Jesus as Lord and Savior, we know that we have given a second opportunity to seize the day, to pray and ask God to give you the strength to deliver the message that he has given you. We all have been given a message because we were saved and now we were given the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile others back to Christ. So cease the day. And for those who are watching online and even if you're in a congregation and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, could I invite you to cease the day? Kape Dharma, we don't know what tomorrow will bring. You have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you should die today, you will not spend eternity with him. I want to ask you to cease this moment. Cease today. Don't put it off for tomorrow. If you are watching online, if you are listening, I want to encourage you to cease today. For tomorrow is promised to no one. Cease today. Carpe Dama. What have you learned in lockdown? Now is the time to show what you have learned in lockdown. Now is where the, the, the rubber bishop hits the road. And we're going to show what we were doing in lockdown. This is the time for us to demonstrate, for us to manifest what we have been doing in lockdown. I want to encourage you this morning. Can we stand? As I'm done, I'm closing. Can we just stand? And as I said in the beginning, this is an introspective sermon. 
and let us just do some self introspection let us do some self uh, let us do some self reflection and just reflect where you are what message that you haven't delivered and why it is you haven't ceased today and those online if you are listening and you are not saved I encourage you to seize the day. Kapadema, God bless you. What have we learned in lockdown? Church, we have given a second opportunity. Let's not blow this opportunity. God is depending on us. God bless you. We pray. Go ahead and pray. We'll pray wherever you are. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray, God, that you give us the strength to deliver the message and that you have given us, God. We will no longer sit on our further message, God. But, God, we will sit that said the Lord because you have called us, God, Heavenly Father, to, be, to declare your word. We thank you for a second opportunity this morning. We thank you for the opportunity that you are given unto us. We will seize the day, God, and we will do your will, God. For you have called us from darkness into marvelous light. And God, we refuse to go back into darkness. But I pray we will seize the day and we will deliver the message that you have given us. Father, remember those who are watching, those who are listening, who are not saved. I pray that your word will penetrate their heart. And they will not, Lord, end this day without saying, I yield, I yield. No more would I grieve thee. I come. was better. If it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me If it had not been oh, for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Tell me. Bless the Lord today. Would you put your hands together? We thank God for that awesome word. We can do better than that for Jesus today. Hallelujah. 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 The word of God came to Jonah again. Thank God that the word came to him again and this morning the grace of the Lord is so vast and expansive that once again the word of the Lord has come to us the word of the Lord has come to us again my question this morning is what will our response be Jonah responded he was not gonna let comfort he wasn't going to let security or anything hinder him from responding to the word of the Lord. And because Jonah responded to the word of the Lord, an entire nation was given the opportunity to respond to the word of the Lord. An entire nation put on sackcloth and burlap and repented because one man responded. This morning, God is saying, what is your response? What is your response to his word? What is your response, those of you watching and joining online, what is your response? 
And I want to encourage you that if you have a response to the Lord, to just drop your name in the chat and someone will be there to pray with you, to talk with you, and to guide you into your next steps as you have responded. I extend this call to those that God has spoken to you about salvation, about giving your life to him, as our pastor said this morning. But also for those that God has spoken to you about a particular assignment he wants you to do. I'm calling for your response today. What is your response? It is on you this morning what your response will be. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. We bless God. We thank God. Thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, for your presence today. We thank you for your grace, your anointing. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done this morning. You have spoken to us again. The word of the Lord has come to us again. And we as a people submit to you, God. We humble ourselves before you today. And we say, Lord, here I am. Lord, we accept your assignment on our lives this morning. We bless you and we praise you. Amen. Say yes. We say yes to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 It's giving time in the house. It's giving time in the house. Oh, y'all got to quiet on me again. It's giving time in the house. It's giving time in the house. Amen. We're ready to give in the house of the Lord today. Amen. And the word, as we've been talking about identity and we've been talking about the call of the Lord, amen, I want to encourage you that the, Lord, the word of the Lord says that if we obey him, if we follow his commandments, we will be the head and not the tail above and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower. How many believe that this morning? How many people believe that this morning? Amen. And the, re the reality is that we're not giving to be blessed. Uh-oh, you got quiet on me. We're giving because we are already blessed. Oh, you don't, re you don't receive that this morning. You see, it, my identity, you see, I don't, it's not about my behavior, it's about my position. Amen. And because I am positioned in the kingdom, I give because I am blessed. Someone say, I am blessed. All right, get your gifts, get your gifts, get your gifts together, your tithes, your offering, whatever you have in the house, I want you to get it together. And as you get that together, there are three ways, options that we have to give. How many online givers do we have in the house? Raise your hand if you're an online giver. Amen, amen. So you can give through Givelify. Wait a minute. How many online givers we have in the house? Put your hands up. All right. How many online givers do we have in the house? All right. If you're an online giver online, just type I'm on, on, online in the chat. All right. Now, how many givers do we have in the house? How many givers that are, are in the house? Amen. I give because I am blessed. Amen. And I know it's going to come back to me pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Amen. I believe that because of my position in the Lord. Now, listen, there are three ways that you can give uh, online. You can give through Givelify, you can give through PayPal, or you can give through our website at ttcog.com. Amen. ttcog.com. Now, the next thing is you can actually give right here in the house. How many people want to give in the house today? Amen. So stand with me. We're going to give. We're going to give. We're going to give. Amen. We're going to give. And I want you to say our, let's say our declaration together. Are you guys ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Let's say our declaration together. As I move. Uh oh. Wait, wait. Everybody stand with me. Everybody stand with me. We got to do this in unison. Do this together in unity. As I move towards a triumphant life. As I move towards a triumphant life. I accept all. I accept all. Heavenly concepts. And ideas, and ideas that God has, that God has to, lead me to, my to lead me to my destiny. Uh oh. That God has to lead me to my destiny. You sound like you don't believe it. I so triumphantly, I so triumphantly 
I reap triumphantly. I give triumphantly. I live triumphantly. Come on, everybody. Let's give in the house. Hallelujah. We have a song this morning that says, Let it be known that our God saves, that our God reigns, and we lift him up this morning. Let it be known that love has come. Let it be known that love has won. And we lift you up this morning, Lord. Y'all ready to lift him? Yeah. Triumphant, are we ready to lift him? Are we ready to lift him? Hallelujah. Drop your hands with us. Let it be. 
Amen. Amen. We lift them up this morning. Amen. How many enjoyed service this morning? How many of you were blessed by the Word of God this morning? How many had a good time in worship today? How many had a good time in worship today? Amen. We were blessed by the presence of the Lord and the Word of the Lord in the house this morning. We're getting ready to go, but before we go, I just want to remind you that this, this Friday, or you can say early Saturday morning, we will ba be back on the prayer line in prayer again. How many believe in the power of prayer? How many believe in the power of prayer? Amen. We have so many testimonies just based on this prayer line, and we are blessed by God to know that God still hears us. So we're expecting to be on the prayer line this weekend. You can look at the flyer. It's going to pop up on your screen, and those of you who are in the house, you know what, what needs to go down in order to join the prayer line. So we're looking forward to that. Amen. And listen, I just want to remind you to live triumphantly and have an awesome week. Let's live in the presence of the Lord this week. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise and glory. Have an awesome weekend. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the full fellowship, the Holy Spirit, the comfort, the rest remain and abide with us all, both now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. Before you go, amen. Those of you that are in the house, here are some announcements. Right now, God bless you.